Here we go. All right, we are. I'm going to open up a window on this computer so that I can see. And I'm requesting permission to record this. Here yeah, I go. Sounds good. All right, we are live, Harry. All right, we're going to let a few people join in here to the uh, discussion. Wonderful. We've got uh, world-renowned trombonist Harry Waters joining us. Hi, everybody. About effective practice tips. H Harry, I'm not even sure what to classify you as. You're a <laughs> trombone soloist. You're an all-around great guy. You're an amazing musician. You're a, I, what do you call well, yourself? Well, it's basically the same. You're describing yourself, Kurt. I <laughs> mean, talk about a renaissance man. I mean, I wish, when I grow up, I want to be Kurt Witt. <laughs> yeah. To be able to play trombone at a high level and then to be able to play piano like you play piano, it's never going to happen. So, so do we call you a trombone soloist, Harry? Is that yes. the, the... Uh, that, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm a trombone soloist. I retired from the Army uh, Blues Jazz Ensemble a few years ago. Uh, and years and years ago, I started with the Dukes of Dixieland. And I believe that might be when we met and, uh, in New Orleans. And that was, gosh decades ago i don't want to say but yeah no been... no doubt no doubt so so your life today you're pretty much traveling all well before all of this craziness traveling all over the country doing clinics solos playing with jazz bands just all around amazing uh, amazing life well i'm having a wonderful time and my family's been so supportive and i'm incredibly grateful to the to them uh, holly and our three kids harry Catherine, and caroline uh, and they're all musicians as well holly is with the uh uh, the army orchestra uh, she has another year until she retires um, but i am so blessed to be able to do this for a living and also to be with khs america and exo uh, uh, trombones and uh, jupiter instruments it's been a, a real privilege to be able to uh, to represent them for the past almost 12 years now uh, with rick de young so but I'm just thrilled to be able to see you. And I want to thank you and Music and Arts for all of the great things that, that you and your fabulous company are doing. I mean, 2,000 lessons a day. You told me in the warm up to this that you guys are putting on thousands of private lessons a day online. I mean, nobody's doing that. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is great. And one of the reasons that we wanted to talk a little bit tonight is to, you know, a lot of students at home uh, trying to figure out what does their new music world look like and taking online private lessons as part of that, what your new practice routine is. And you've got a lot of experience doing this, Harry. And so I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit and talk about some of these tools for students how to make their practice time fun. You've been doing some really neat stuff. I think you've got a lot of experience that. So let's start off a little bit with um, kind of some of your tips and tricks for how to make your home practice time fun. Well, Kurt, what I really like to do is establish a routine. Um, I didn't used to be a morning person, but as I've gotten older, uh, I'm, I'm finding that I can get a lot more done in the mornings, but it doesn't have to be in long extended sessions. You know. With, with smartphones distracting us all the time, we need to be able to concentrate for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time, and then uh, put the horn down and then go do another task. Uh, but if we can concentrate for short bursts of time and tally it up at the end of the day, chances are we can get you know uh, an hour and a half of good practice time and maybe even two hours, but we have to do it chunk by chunk. I, I'm, I used to think that the best thing to do is to, would be to go hours and hours at a time. No, not so. It's hard to concentrate that long. Really? So, so getting into your routine, your morning routine of this is the time I'm going to practice. It doesn't have to be long, but every day that consistent routine. Do you yeah. do that yourself, whether you're on the road, whether you're in a hotel, whether you're doing whatever? Absolutely. And that needs to remain a priority. Uh, just staying healthy, uh, uh, practicing, exercising, eating well. But having the horn out all the time, when I get to a hotel, first thing that comes out is uh, not my clothes, not my toothbrush, but my trombone. And it goes on the other bed. So uh, it's always staring at me in the face. That way I feel guilty if I'm not practicing from time to time. So I can pick up the horn and do what I call drive-by practicing. 
And you can do the same thing at home. When you get home from school, everybody, all the band students, when, when things get back to normal, hopefully in the fall, but if not, maybe in the spring, when you get home from school, get your horn out and put it on the dining room table or on the couch until your parents make you move it. That's interesting. So you're kind of subtly reminded about it every time you walk by, maybe a little bit of a guilt. Oh man, I need to, I need to spend a little bit of time with the horn. Yes, yes, absolutely. And of course, I'm a huge fan of buzzing in the morning uh, to, to get the, uh, the embouchure where it needs to be, get the air flowing. But after that, it's all about long tones. Now, we talked a little bit about routine and establishing a routine, but I encourage everyone to work with their private teachers, hopefully online now with Music and Arts, to establish a routine uh, that really focuses on the fundamentals. Breathing, proper posture, how you're holding the horn, whatever that might be, but um, making sure that you're being efficient. You want to practice smarter, not harder, and always focusing on the fundamentals, pitch, rhythm, breathing, and that can be a part of your warm-up every single day. You want to get into a routine with your warm-up, but it also needs to be evolving constantly, so you're in a routine, but not a rut. What's your advice to students that kind of try to balance that, okay, I've got to spend time doing long tones because that's important for the development of my chops, but I also want to have some fun and I want to learn and try some new things. What's your, what's your secret sauce of balancing this maintenance versus learning and having fun portion of your practice? Oh my gosh. Well, playing by ear every day at, at some point really keeps things mighty fresh. Uh, if you go on to Pandora, uh, if you go on to Apple Music now or Spotify, you can often find songs that you never dreamt about playing along with. It could be the Beatles. Uh, it could be Simon and Garfunkel. It could, uh, uh, I don't know, be Lady Gaga. <laughs> but as, long as, you pick the, as long as you pick the horn up and just play along, starting by uh, figuring out what the melody is, figuring out the form, how many measures are in a, a chorus, uh, but also is really, really crucial. As you know, Kurt, is figuring out the key as fast as possible. Uh, and he, here's what I, I do with my kids a lot, my own kids, but also my students, because I, I teach uh, university students uh, at, the, at the community college level at Northern Virginia Community College, but also online at the University of Arkansas at Monticello. And um, we really focus on tonal recognition. If you can remember what a B flat sounds like, you can pretty much relate everything else to that because I don't have a perfect pitch. No, no, no. I'm sure you probably do. I wish, but I think <laughs> I can, I think I know what a B flat sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. Ba, da, da, da. We'll figure out how close I am. Oh, pretty close. Okay, so if you can figure that out, you can get everything, you can figure out everything else to it. Da, ba, da, ba, da. Perfect fit, boo, da, boo, Maria, the Simpsons. Okay, so you could also, whenever you're in, a, in an elevator or in the car going to school or riding around with your brothers or sisters going to soccer practice, if you hear something on the radio, you can get your virtual instrument out, your virtual trombone, your virtual flute and practice along and try and match what that pitch would be. So almost kind of hearing it go by in your head and seeing it on the music relating to your note. That's yes. a, what a what a great tool for kind of always keeping your mind thinking. Uh, so for those of you just joining us, we're talking with uh, international soloist, Harry Waters. Hi, uh, great guy, uh, 20 plus years in one of the top military bands in DC, just amazing player. He's giving us a little bit of insight into some uh, practice tips and tricks. If anybody has questions, uh, hit us up on the, uh, uh, the Facebook chat. Uh, we'll get to as many questions as we can. Of course, I got plenty of questions and I wanna uncover a little bit more about your, um, your experience teaching. You teach a wide range of students. What are some of the common things that beginning musicians struggle with? Not just beginning trombone players, but beginning musicians of any instrument that you find. Uh, staying relaxed, staying relaxed. Having a, not a, a, if you're a wind player, a brass player, you wanna have an open throat. Oh, and really practice getting air in and out silently. And I'll let, let you in a little secret. When I was in fourth grade studying 
trombone in 1972 with Mr. Dreibelbus in, in uh, at State College, Pennsylvania. I would practice. My parents would make me practice, and I wasn't too happy about it. And I would get all riled up. I, I would start to sweat. My throat would get tight. My body would get tight. And at the end of the practice session, if I wasn't completely worn out and exhausted and kind of frustrated, I didn't think that I had practiced hard enough. Well, guess what? The complete opposite is true. Practicing almost needs to be like therapy, like yoga for all of us. We pick up the horn, we start to play, and throughout our warm up, throughout the second session, throughout the third session, throughout the day, we become more and more relaxed. And that's really what it's all about. Yeah, that's interesting that adding tension into your body, no matter what musical instrument you play, tension is like the kind of the, the opposite of what you should be doing, whether it's right. piano and, you know, having real tense arms and fingers or flute or kind of anything, tension. Do you have any Viola. other kind of, yeah, do you have any other kind of thoughts and exercises for how you help students when they're practicing kind of alleviate some of that tension? Well, uh, during the, uh, the warm-ups that I'm hosting in the mornings, once a week uh, at 11 o'clock Eastern time, we do a little bit of that and we do shoulder rolls. Mm. We do deep breathing exercises. And then we also do push-ups and sit-ups to get the blood flowing. <laughs> really? So exercise oh, yeah. time with Harry. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But it, again, it's all about achieving a state of relaxed flow. You want to be in that state of flow. So when you're practicing, you really don't know what time it is. Um, you don't know what the weather's like outside. Uh, you, I'm speaking to the choir here, but you've been in a recording studio where you've been recording for hours and hours and hours, and you really don't know what time it is. Then you'll go outside of the recording studio, you realize the sun went down. Oh my gosh. Well, you want to achieve that state of flow. So you really almost lose track of time. And that's when you can achieve great things. Yeah, that's a what a what a great analogy of kind of that physical taking care of your body part. What are I'm I'm really interested to hear what you see as some of the things that more advanced students struggle with. So, okay, beginning students tension, getting kind of into a proper space to play your instrument makes a lot of sense. As you work with more advanced students, what are some of the things that you see that they struggle with in their practice? Well, of course, there needs to be a degree of talent. Um, but, but I've worked with and I've met so many extraordinarily talented musicians um, that are most of their lives have been told how talented they are, how great they are. And uh, I, that can be a dangerous thing. I'd rather have somebody who has the talent, but also is determined beyond belief and obsessed to take it to that next level. So I think more advanced students, if they can take the talent that they have and then set their sights ridiculously high, even higher than they ever, ever imagined. Uh, imagine yourself as a principal trumpet in the, uh, in the Chicago Symphony or a band leader on one of the cruise ships that you worked on probably in the early 90s. Um, setting the sights really, really high. When, when I was uh, in school in the 70s, I wanted to be like Bill Watrous. I wanted to be out in Southern California, living on a houseboat in Marina Del Rey and riding my motorcycle to all the hot studio gigs. Well, I mean, that was ridiculous. That was crazy. But it was a ridiculously high level uh, that I wanted to get to as fast as possible. Now, I didn't do any of that. Went, I went and had a, a wonderful career with the Army Band in Washington, met the girl of my dreams, and now we have a wonderful family. But I continued playing music the whole time because I said, crazy high goals. And I encourage everyone to dream big, no matter what their age, no matter where they are in musical development. Yeah, that's great, great, uh, great advice. I, I'd love to, you know, pick your brain a little bit about what advice you have for teachers that are doing online lessons. So uh, as we talked about, music and arts is, is doing some great stuff with online lessons and trying to keep that continuity uh, for students that have been studying music. Uh, what advice do you have for teachers that are maybe kind of doing this for the first time and some uh, maybe tips that can help their teaching experience, you know, really be solid with online lessons? Well, I think uh, first having the courage to do it. Being brave is extremely helpful 
uh, for, for teachers, but also to get, it gives their, their students confidence as well. Uh, if there's any way you can record each lesson online, and I think there's a lot of ways to do it via Zoom uh, or FaceTime, just press uh, screen record, um, but then take notes throughout and wear headphones so you can get as much data as you can. But if you have a lesson that starts maybe at, at four o'clock in the afternoon, make sure you can log on with the student 15 minutes beforehand or the night before to make sure that everything is working just right because technology is crazy. And sometimes it can crash on you with, without you ever noticing. And then encourage the student to have a microphone that's placed in a way that's not going to provide too much distortion. I'm finding that out to be the case a lot, especially since all of our juries with, no, with Northern Virginia Community College uh, have gone online. We have juries and a couple of my students are doing full recitals <laughs> this, wow. this semester. So it's, it's a huge undertaking. But yesterday's lessons, I was teaching all day and, and we were thinking we were doing most of it. It wasn't about music yesterday. It was about mic placement, where everything is going to go. Because what they're going to be doing is uh, uploading individual pieces uh, you know, the Hubble or Herbert L. Clark's cousins uh, onto files in Google Docs, and then members of the committee will access that later. Now, students can do that too with, with teachers. If, if there are problems with, uh, with connections, uh, a teacher could say, all right, we're having a little bit of trouble right now, but let's keep moving forward. What I want you to do is uh, record your, your piece you know, from, from Rubank or uh, uh, Essential Elements, and essential elements number four, and then send it to me uh, as a Google document or a Google file, and then I will listen back and get back with you in a few minutes. And that way, you can provide a whole bunch of detailed analysis. Like at measure three, uh, the the E flat was a little low, so you're going to put a, an up arrow over the E flat. You can get extremely detailed, almost to the point where. Um, it's almost as good as being there live. Of course, being there live is ideal, but there are all sorts of things we can do online yep. to, to reach students who normally would never have access to, to high quality instruction. So I want to thank all the band directors and all the teachers for what they're doing. And thank you for making the world a better place. Yeah, absolutely. This is certainly something that, uh, uh, hey, the, the idea of how do we teach music online uh, something that a lot of people have tried, uh, you know, not sure how successful it's been in the past, but now we've got enough critical mass and enough learnings for how to do it well. So I want to flip it around and kind of turn it to the student's experience. So what, in your opinion, makes for a good student experience when it comes to an online lesson? Um, just as it is with, with live lessons, preparation, preparation, and preparation. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, with, but that means taking preparation to another level as well. When you're practicing, record yourself, record video, and then play it back and do real-time analysis of, of how well you just did on that particular piece and write it down. But you, you want to write down your observations about what you just played. If, if I'm talking to students. You want to write it down like you're listening to somebody else because you don't want to get emotionally involved in your own performance because then you could, you know, be self-critical or if you've sounded a little better than you thought you did, you don't want to congratulate yourself too much either. So uh, I think just being aware of putting yourself in a real world platform in a real world platform in this new environment is online. So you want to train like you fight and fight like you train. Yeah, it makes makes sense. I, I like how you've mentioned recording a couple of different times. What are some of the the kind of tools that you really like for um, effective practice tips? Is there a particular kind of type of recorder that you really like, or do you like to have a notebook handy so you can kind of take quick notes of the things you want to work on, or do you have a journal that you keep? Tell me a little bit more about some of that. Uh, well, I, I, do have, I do have a journal and I send out weekly worksheets to all my students as to what we've been working on that past week. And I take a picture of it and send it to them. But for my own development, I have uh, my own shorthand when I'm writing, when I'm writing uh, my observations down for what I just heard. Because when you're listening back, it want, your standard needs to be, is it good enough to be released on, on a CD? That sound ancient. Is it good enough to be released on a CD or 
or on iTunes or Apple Music or whatever it is now? Uh, is it ready to be released to the world? And if not, why not in particular? And we're going to get it to the point where we can, we can make it a little better. It's almost like you're doing a, a, a virtual version of Auto-Tune or Pro Tools and fixing all the things that can be fixed and writing in uh, up arrows, down arrows, sideways, or uh, bullseyes if things need to be focused a little more on a certain note, or a long arrow if, it, if, a, if a breath needs to uh, extend further than you would think. You ought to see the, uh, the, the trombone part, I, I wish I could hold it up, to the Creston trombone fantasy that I performed recently. I mean, it looks like something from outer space that you would uh, try and communicate with aliens. It's my own shorthand, but it's only after listening to take after take after take to get it ready for a performance that I did out in Colorado. And uh, it's, that, it's that obsessive attention to detail that, that makes it so much fun. That sounds like a, a, a book possibly with a, <laughs> the Harry Water shorthand to uh, uh, critiquing music. <laughs> Let me, um, we've been talking a lot about practicing and teaching and, and so forth and some, some really interesting things. I wanna switch subjects just a little bit and talk about kind of careers as a musician. So you've had oh. an amazing career as a performing musician, as an educator, soloist. Um, what do you feel like uh, is the prospect for students today looking at, I'm graduating, like your students, I'm graduating, I'm looking at a career in music, this is a little bit different world, the idea of how do I make a living being a musician, what are some of your um, kind of recommendations and feedback that you give students when they talk to you about that? Well, there's a, a lot of talk about uh, the new area of music entrepreneurship, but let me tell you something, it, that's developing more and more, but it's, it's been around since the beginning of time because as musicians, uh, we're constantly having to be entrepreneurs and figure and figuring out creative ways to make our way in the world. You can't tell a musician, Kurt, that something is impossible. He or she will say, oh yeah, just watch me and they'll figure out a way around it. Now, ideally, the, uh, the music business should be employing all musicians who, who are able to work. Unfortunately, that's never been the case. That's never been the case. However, we can always find a way to become better musicians if we're full-time musicians or if we're part-time musicians, we're still musicians and we're still all in this together, a musical family moving forward. Um, some people are contributing in ways that, uh, that improve the world by uh, getting funding for the arts. Uh, some other folks are finding ways to get hands into music, uh, get, getting uh, uh, instruments into, into the hands of, of, of folks who could never afford them. I mean, that's incredibly important. And then being able to pick up a horn and demonstrate and inspire those folks. Uh, when I grow up, I, I want to be either Kurt Witt or a band director. Because, I mean, what, what you're doing is just incredible all the time. Uh, you've, you're, you're looking out for everybody. You're you're bringing people together in ways that's truly inspiring. And when it's time to play, you just sit down and you just burn at them. And we, we've shared the stage on several occasions and it's always been a, a true honor. And you, and you keep the musical level to a very, very high level. With I think you've, you've got a kind of an interesting point there about there's so many things you could do in the music world, whether being an international soloist like yourself, being in the music products world, being in music therapy, working in, in publishers. It would seem like you know, today the ability for somebody who's a musician to share their music is greater than ever before. My, yes. uh, my daughter and her friends are recording music right now and they'll be able to put it up on SoundCloud and Spotify, share it with their friends and just have a great time where when you and I were coming up, there was only one way you did that is you recorded a CD and you pressed the CD and you sold them out at gigs. There was no other way to do that. It's, uh, I'd imagine your students you know, have got some pretty interesting prospects for life as a musician. Oh my gosh, yes. And I'm learning a lot from my students, uh, just from the, uh, from the technical aspects of some of this. Uh, putting, you know, trombone collage, uh, collages together on acapella, that's, that's wonderful. But I'm also talking to, to some of my students who are able to, to do it rapidly in Final Cut Pro or, or other, other apps that provide crazy capabilities. And they're able to slow things down, speed it up without changing the pitch. And I'm going, ah, I, I, okay, well, 
and so I'm always picking their brains. And uh, that what I try and do is provide my perspectives on the long game. Uh, it's not about getting ready for a jury or an audition or challenging the, your, your trumpet, the, the first chair trumpeter for first chair. Those are all important snapshots in our arc of musical development. But this is a marathon and it's the process and the joy of practicing on a regular basis and encouraging others to join us in that practice that really makes it worthwhile. I'm sure that you have in your career uh, periods of time where you could really identify a st a stretches where you, you jumped several levels as a musician. And those are, those are sections that we all want to share together and, and have as many of them as we possibly can. Yeah, well, certainly this is a, an opportunity for a lot of people to really spend time honing their craft of sorts. I, I'm really yes. curious, kind of, again, full circle back to our practice topic. Has, has this kind of time period uh, changed your practice approach? Are you finding you're doing exactly the same thing you were doing three months ago? Or have you kind of adapted your practicing uh, and encourage your students to adapt their practicing to fit the time period? That's a great question, Kurt, because I think in re, uh, practically speaking, uh, yes, it's evolved in, in positive ways. Uh, when, I, when the social distancing first started, I was doing the, the, uh, the online uh, warm-ups every day. And I'm so glad Gavin was, has been able to, to, uh, to meet with us as well. But uh, with my family responsibilities and my teaching, which has gone online 100% now, I've had to cut that back to once a week. However, I'm still thinking about different ways to approach different uh, harm, harmonic ideas or articulations. And uh, I, I wake up in the middle of the night now. Boom! Oh, 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 oh! What, we're we're going to outline the uh, we're going to outline chords to all the things you are tomorrow. And then trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to present that? What's the best way to do it? Am I going to start uh, as a bossa nova and then move it up as, to a, to a medium swing? Uh, and so it's it's really affected. A lot of my uh, my prep, but also how I'm thinking about my prep. Yeah, that's interesting. I suppose the if if you were just kind of doing your regular daily activities of driving kids around and going to the store and everything, you're not thinking about you know okay, what am I going to work on tomorrow and get those creative ideas. And so that's a that's exciting that hopefully this uh, kind of quarantine period inspires a burst of creativity that uh, uh, that yes. musicians are you know, going to share with the world. One of my uh, good friends in California, Tony Guerrero, is uh, uh, collecting songs from people that have uh, kind of made recordings during this quarantine period as kind of a, an illustration of what artists can do when they're inspired uh, and to share that as kind of a testimony to the time period. I think really interesting in your example of kind of waking up in the middle of the night thinking about, okay, what am I going to do for the warm up tomorrow? Is it just a great, great example of that? Well, and so, so, you know, and during this time, which is a very, very uh, unusual time period, and it can be stressful as well. We can use this as an outlet uh, for relaxed creativity. And it, if you ever find yourself bored, snap out of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to students all around the world. You have so many great opportunities now with social media to, uh, to put some goals for yourself. Okay, I'm going to collaborate with one of my friends in my high school band uh, on, on acapella or some other platform, and we're gonna post it by the end of the week. Uh, so having that as a goal once a week to have something done, it's amazing. Great things can be accomplished with a plan and not quite enough time. Yeah, the the uh, the time deadline. We don't need to be perfect. We just need to be done. I think is a, <laughs> a great reminder for all of us. So um, I I really appreciate your time, Harry. Last thing I want to ask you. Um, so people checking this out want to learn a little bit more about you and your recordings and your career and and kind of your uh, your world. How do, how do people find you online? Well, thank you for asking about that. Uh, the I have a YouTube channel that everyone can uh, go to, and please. Click subscribe, uh, two T's in Waters, Harry Waters, W-A-T-T-E-R-S. Uh, you can also go to uh, harrywaters.com. But the YouTube is, uh, website is my, my biggest platform at this point, also on, on Facebook. But really hope to see everyone tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, and this will continue for quite a while until 
the world starts to get back to normal at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And then it will be reposted both on Facebook and on YouTube as well. But Kurt, I want to thank you and all the great folks at Music and Arts and as well as my, uh, my sponsors, KHS America, uh, XO Brass and Jupiter Instruments for all of your support. I mean, I'm your biggest fan, Kurt. <laughs> well, great to catch up as always. Hopefully uh, we can cross paths in real time soon and we'll have to have you up to the office and uh, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a little playing. It would be my great privilege. Thank you, buddy. All Take right. Care. Good to see you, Harry. Stay safe.